Well, good day everyone, it's Warren here from NQ Explorers. I'm out in the gold fields with the new Garrett Goldmaster 24K. We'll run through a few of the settings, have a listen to the audio on the new machine. We'll bury a few nuggets and have a listen to the audio response on gold. Let's get into it. Okay, here's the uh, main screen on the uh, Goldmaster 24K. We still got the little uh, White's logo and the Garrett logo. Um, pictograms on this machine, rather than the normal English labelling you would be accustomed to if you're a Garrett user. So it's just obviously an on and off button. And that can turn the backlight. There's a backlight for uh, low light conditions. We can just turn that off. Now the main control you're going to use when you're prospecting with this machine is going to be the sensitivity. So this is just a direct up and down, and that's the sensitivity bar there. 8, 9, 10 is a boost system. Normally you wouldn't want to run it that high in mineralization where you're going to be looking for gold. So an 8 or a 7 if we get stable threshold. Okay, the thing is with this machine, it's uh, like any VLF. That's uh, This runs at 48 kilohertz, so it's quite a high frequency. Uh, it's all about your sensitivity and your threshold settings. Uh, you're listening for little bumps and beeps in the threshold and dips, uh, not just positive responses. And the sensitivity control uh, on this machine is directly accessed by the um, up and down arrows. That's, uh, there's a good reason for that because basically you're driving this with a sensitivity. You've got to run it as hot as you can uh, for the existing conditions. If you find that your uh, mineralization is quite high and you're getting a lot of false signals, first thing you do is reduce your sensitivity. Yes, you'll lose a little bit of depth, but you won't miss any larger nuggets. And realistically, um, these modern digital machines don't miss too much gold if you walk over the top of it. Okay, the 24K is literally a turn on and go gold detector. It's got an automatic ground balance and tracking system. So when I turn it on, it defaults to the XGB tracking and ground balancing system. I just got to balance it, and there you go, it's ground balance. Look at that. That is awesome. Now you just adjust your sensitivity to the ground conditions. 10 has a boost or an audio boost on it. That's usually going to be far too hot for most conditions, but I'm running over at 8 or 7 here. Uh, I'll go higher if I find that it's really quiet and then drop it back down as I go as the mineralization varies. But the tracking system will adjust to the mineralization. Just by way of comparison with other Garrett machines, I've got an AT Max here and I'll just show you the ground balance reading. 90. I'll side balance it to open up the ground balance window. That's the kind of ground we're working in here. Now we'll just run through some of the other features we've got here. Okay, this is the track lock button. That XGB automatic ground balance I just demonstrated will track and um, adjust the ground balance as you move across varying uh, mineralizations, hot and cold pockets in the um, in the soil. Uh, ideally, that's not uh, as sensitive on small gold as you'd want because you're tracking all the time. You do lose a little bit of depth and sensitivity, so you can actually use a lock. You can lock your ground balance at, the, at whatever's under the coil at the moment, and that'll keep the ground balance locked uh, in that setting. Now, once it starts getting noisy, you may want to go back to a ground tracking system, but uh, for general prospecting, Run it. I'd, I would run it, this is the way I've been operating it, run it unlocked so that it's tracking the ground and you're getting a nice steady threshold that you can hear at the moment. Uh, once you get onto a uh, target, um, the danger is you can actually track it out if you keep, if you get a faint target or a faint bump in the threshold, the danger is you can track the target out um, through the XGB system, so what you do is you lock your ground balance and it stops tracking. You've locked the ground balance at whatever the last setting was and you've also got this ground grab where you can just hit this and it'll grab the ground at, the, at that spot and update the ground balance even though you're in lock. But for general prospecting walking around the bush looking for a patch or any isolated nuggets, uh, automatic ground balance and tracking on the XGB and then just lock it when you get onto a target. The two arrows for adjusting uh, the various controls when you enter the other controls, that's a pinpoint button which is fairly self-explanatory. This with the nail crossed out, that's your iron reject, so if I press that I've now got it, that lit on the screen and you can see I've discriminated points of iron which is adjustable by uh, operating these keys. Ideally, if you're prospecting, you wouldn't have any iron in, but um, uh, iron discrimination in. But uh, there are cases where you might want to dial in a bit of iron, where you can actually use that if the ground is really intense and you have to reduce your sensitivity a bit. You can always put in a little bit of iron discrimination, but once again, you're risking miss missing the small nuggets doing that. Okay, the next control is a little music symbol. That adjusts what audio system you want to run in. It's either an all metal mode with a um, 
with a zip signal, which you'd be accustomed to on a prospecting machine, or if you don't want to listen to that threshold all day and that's just going to wear you out, you can go to a beep mode, which I'm in now. Now you get low tone and high tone, low tone bad target, high tone good target. But notice also you get a target ID, which is great on a prospecting machine, you get a digital target ID. That's optimised, that target ID, when you've got your settings right. If you're running a bit hot and she's chattery, the digital target ID may be a bit out. And of course, like any uh, VLF machine, the closer you get to the target, the more accurate the target ID, but 01 to 99, ferrous up to um, highly conductive. So that beep system there that I'm in now, the beep audio, uh, once again, lose a little bit of the sensitivity and depth. Not ideal for nugget uh, hunting, but uh, if you're getting tired of listening to that threshold all day and you don't want to tolerate that, you can uh, operate it in the um, beep system or just drop back into the zip zip system, uh, which is a much better audio in my mind. The small speaker symbol here accesses two functions, volume and threshold. If I just press it, hit it once, I can adjust the audio volume. Plus you have independent uh, controls on your uh, headphones. If I hold it down for a second, I get TH for threshold, and you can see me adjusting the threshold to whatever your preference is there. And then, much again, back to operate. Well, one function that's critical on a prospecting detector is proper ion identification. Um, on the Goldmaster 24K, that's very, very easy because you get a digital target ID, 0 to 99. The low end of the scale is ferrous. The high end is your know, highly conductive uh, silvers and coppers and those kind of things, gold and lead in the middle. Uh, so, uh, it's very easy to identify targets as iron. Now, when you're in the beep mode, you actually get a low tone as opposed to the high tone for better targets. So, it's a very simple system, works really well. Right, this is a piece of old timers rubbish. Bit of iron from an old matchbox, an old Vesta box. We'll check it with the machine. Well, right, I'll just go into beep mode so you can hear it in the uh, basically on off audio system that's not really the all metal threshold mode. Okay, that's now got the music lit there. Low tone iron, you can see that if you look up here in the left, top left hand corner, you can see that pixel on the uh, ferrous end being lit. Okay, we're getting a higher reading erratically, but basically it's given a reading of 0608 ferrous. Now I can eliminate that if I want to, or I go to the uh, iron reject. As you can see, it's lit up some pixels and they're adjustable. You can hear it discriminating a little bit there and cutting out. I'm still in beep mode. Clearly a poor target because it's a low response uh, on the audio. So really a quick way to check for iron that I've been doing today is just uh, go into the beep mode and uh, see where the pixel lights up and if we've got a low tone and an inconsistent low target ID with some breaking up of a signal, it's ferrous. So once again, uh, you've got to treat target IDs with caution because uh, gold and ironstone can identify as iron and sound like iron on some machines. Okay, it's a good inclusion to have on a prospecting machine digital target ID. Uh, you can tell you're low conductive from high conductive targets. Right, I've got two nuggets with me that came off this patch actually. One's a 0.3 grammer, one's a 0.6 grammer. Uh, I'm going to bury them just here, back in the patch in the ground from whence they came. Very highly mineralised here. Of course, uh, now I've disturbed the ground and I've brought uh, air pockets into the play. It's not like it's been there 100,000 years or a million years. It's very artificial. But you'll get to hear what it sounds like on the machine. Okay, here's a nugget I'm about to bury. It's uh, 0.3 of a gram. And it actually came from this patch, so it's going back into the ground that it came out of. Okay, as you can see, it's quite a dense, hard-packed grey clay with little bits of quartz and ironstone all through it. Um, and it's quite highly mineralised ground, balancing in the 90s. There goes a little piece of gold, a little 0.3 grammar. We'll backfill it and detect it with the gold master from the surface. Of course, this isn't replicating a nugget that's been in the ground hundreds of thousands of years, but just for the sake of the audio test, we'll try this. Okay, there's a little nugget buried there. I've turned on the track lock because we don't want it to track out with the automatic ground balancing system. Lovely response on that. Go 90 degrees. No problem at all. 
Now, what I'll do, I'll recover this like as if I've actually detected this in the field, naturally. And we'll hear that uh, audio response getting louder and we'll actually get a target ID as we get closer to the gold. Okay, I've redug the gold from the ground and it's out in the mullock heap. No response now. Now I'm getting a target ID. 11, jump to 20, 8 to 11. You can see this is repeatable. You can see the top uh, cursor is jumping around a bit because I'm not right on the target. 9 to 13, target ID. Very nice. Let's get him on the ground. Bring out the old nugget scoop. And we'll see if we can get the target into the uh, nugget scoop. So it sounds like on the coil. That's what I love about these closed coils too. Very easy to operate with. Open coils, not so much for prospecting. I love that audio. I mean, it's just a really pleasant... You can listen to that all day. Even the, the threshold's very nice. Very pleasant. There we go. Got him back. A little 0.3 grammar. So that's the response of the uh, 24K on actual gold. Okay, for the purpose of the exercise, that just gives you some idea what the audio sounds like on gold in the ground. Um... Mineralization is obviously a main uh, obstacle when you're prospecting. On this machine, you need to adjust your sensitivity and get a nice balance between uh, sensitivity and then your uh, automatic threshold as you're detecting because uh, if the machine's burbling and making all sorts of chirps and beeps and it's clearly out of, a, out of ground balance or uh, you've got it too sensitive for the current conditions. If you decrease your sensitivity, yes, you're going to lose a little bit of depth but you're still not going to miss reasonable sized nuggets in mineralized soil. I really like this search coil. It's super lightweight. It's not like the solid epoxies I'm used to with Garrett. Uh, it's a uh, solid coil as you can see, so I can now get my little uh, nugget scoop and wave it across the coil without uh, the issues of an open coil, um, or just even move the little uh, muller keep around on the coil to hear any gold that I get or any target that I get. Um, it's fully waterproof, the coil. But like I said, it's super lightweight, and because it's uh, not solid epoxy with the windings um, uh, moulded into the uh, epoxy, I'm not getting false signals when I bump sticks and rocks and that kind of thing. It's super quiet, very stable operation. Very impressed. Right, I'll have just a quick look at the field operations on the Goldmaster 24K from Garrett. What are my impressions? I really like the machine. It's quite uh, light, very well balanced. The battery pack at the back, that's the main weight. There's absolutely no weight in the coil. Um, and the housing's minimal too. Really well balanced, and of course that's adjustable. Um, really a switch on and go. The automatic ground balance and tracking system works a treat. This is noisy country for a VLF, and this thing just cruises through it without a beep. It's great. Uh, I've really enjoyed detecting in here today. You heard the response of the machine on gold. That wasn't obviously naturally occurring gold. Well, it came from there, but I put it back. Very distinct, very high tone. Opposed to ground noise, I wasn't getting much ground noise, but ground noise typically on a VLF is that boing, rounded sound, and it's not usually repeatable in two directions. Uh, that piece of gold definitely was. Um, there are some other advanced features I haven't showed you. I didn't want to mix it up too much today and make it look too confusing, but the um, it actually has a self-adjusting threshold control where you can basically adjust the recovery speed of the threshold. There's a factory reset, which just puts it back to factory, but switch on and go. Uh, adjust your sensitivity, automatic ground balance and tracking and away you go. When you get a target, when you're onto a patch of targets or a target, hit the track lock button so that you don't track the target out uh, and it locks the ground balance to whatever's under the coil. Then you can do a ground grab if you want to, if you want to adjust it, if it's a little bit noisy by hitting the pinpoint and you'll get a, a, uh, a display on the screen which uh, illustrates the uh, conductivity of the ground or the mineralization, if you like. Um, 
tons of features a lot of fun uh, batteries are going to last a long time as advertised from what I can see um, and that recharge pack well I can charge it on my solar panel or uh, the auxiliary battery in the vehicle great machine from Garrett I, I think it's a winner I, I know the White's machine was awesome and this has just been enhanced a little bit further it's great uh, really like it well thanks for watching and happy fossicking bye for now <music>